Welcome to Nita's Excerpts from the Experts, seven-minute learning sessions with researchers and practitioners in the field of eating disorders and individuals who share their experiences and perspectives. I'm your host, Sarah Bowie-Keaton. This week, our guest is Dr. Tim Brewerton. He is Affiliate Professor of Psychiatry and Behavioral Sciences at the Medical University of South Carolina in Charleston, where he has a private practice and conducts research. He has over 40 years in practice and is board certified in general child adolescent and forensic psychiatry and addiction medicine. He is a founding fellow of the Academy of Eating Disorders and founding member, former president of the Eating Disorders Research Society. He has published over 180 articles and book chapters and edited two books. Today, Dr. Brewerton will be speaking about trauma and eating disorders. Dr. Brewerton, Welcome to our program. Thank you so much for being here. So Dr. Brewerton, what is the connection between trauma and eating disorders? Well, that's a really good question. I'm glad you started with that. And I, I think the first thing to do is to define what I mean by trauma. Uh, and for me, the best definition is using the three E's, uh, event, experience, and effect. And in terms of traumatic events, the, these are highly ubiquitous in the general population, as well as in people with eating disorders. However, we know that different people experience the very same event differently based on any number of variables. This may include age, gender, sexual orientation, genetic predisposition, family history, previous history of traumas or trauma dose, current state of mind, as well as available support persons that uh, the person has in their life, other psychosocial resources and coping strategies. Psychosocial resources, for example, the ability to get help and treatment. Uh, a history of traumatic events in people with eating disorders is almost universal. And we know from studies like the National Comorbidity Survey Replication, 90 to 100% of those who met criteria for an eating disorder, and we're talking about anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorder, reported one or more traumatic events, events that could result in PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. There is evidence that eating disorders are often preceded by anxiety, depression, or personality dimensions such as perfectionism, obsessionality, or impulsivity, all of which can alter how people experience traumatic events and then how they process them. Most importantly, the long-term effects of traumatic experiences or what we think about when we talk about PTSD as well as related psychiatric disorders or symptoms associated with trauma. And just about all psychiatric disorders have trauma as a nonspecific risk factor. Uh, for them, along with other risk factors. Effects besides PTSD and its symptoms may include other problems such as mood disorders, depression and bipolar disorder, for example, substance use disorders, uh, dissociative disorders, as well as personality disorders. It sounds very complex with all the comorbidities. Um, can you talk a little bit about the research that you've done on this subject? Yes, com comorbidities, as you say, are really the rule rather than the exception. Most people with eating disorders have something that they're comorbid with, uh, either medical problems or some other psychiatric disorder. Uh, in terms of my research, I'd, I'd first like to say that my research has been very much inspired by the patients I've seen clinically. So I align myself with researchers at the National Crime Victims Research and Treatment Center at MUSC, and we explored the link between traumatic events, PTSD, and eating disorders in the third wave of the National Women's Study. Lo and behold, we showed in our 1997 paper, 26 years ago, that there was indeed a significant link between events like rape, molestation, and aggravated assault as, uh, and the subsequent development of PTSD with bulimia nervosa, and to a lesser extent, binge eating disorder. And this was in a national representative uh, or non-clinical sample of women uh, throughout the United States. 
And many other studies followed in the wake of the National Women's Study that replicated and extended our findings such that today it is well, well accepted and recognized that trauma and PTSD are important uh, in, uh, to not only recognize, but to treat in individuals with eating disorders. Uh, I'm not saying that everybody has PTSD, but a significant proportion of people with eating disorders, particularly those that are refractory to, to treatment in uh, outpatient, uh, have significant trauma that, that drives their comorbid symptoms. Uh, conversely, we know uh, from research that individuals with PTSD have been shown to have higher rates of eating disorders and or uh, disordered eating. More recently, my work uh, has shown that current PTSD is present in about half of all cases of eating disorders admitted to residential treatment programs, and that the PTSD is associated with greater severity, more comorbidity, and more chronicity. However, we have also learned that eating disorders and PTSD can be treated concurrently using more integrated approaches that incorporate successfully trauma-focused treatments, such as cognitive processing therapy. What are some takeaways that you have for individuals and families that are looking for treatment? for trauma and eating disorders. So the, the, I think you talked about the integrative treatment, yeah. um, treating both of them together. Yeah, good question. Um, first of all, I think it's important for anyone with an eating disorder to not only have a comprehensive medical assessment, but also a comprehensive psychiatric or psychological assessment that asks about traumatic experiences and their effects. Uh, this is necessary so that families and patients can identify PTSD or PTSD symptoms when present, as well as any other co-occurring mental disorders. Having an eating disorder and having a family member with an eating disorder is stressful in itself. Uh, and sometimes family members are not aware of traumatic events that their loved one may have experienced. So it is important to be open to this possibility. Many such occurrences are not disclosed due to fear and shame. Secondly, if PTSD or other trauma-related disorders are factors, it is important to find treatment providers or programs who can provide integrated treatment for all conditions. This ideally happens during the same treatment course orchestrated by the same providers. More and more clinicians and programs are realizing this as the evidence to support this approach has increased significantly over the last few years. So it sounds like your research is informing treatment as well, and the cognitive processing seems to be the most effective in what you're seeing. Yes, I, 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 I hope it's informing treatment. Yes, uh, I think it is. Uh, we've come a long way. It, it used to be that uh, people didn't think trauma had much to do with eating disorders, but uh, we know from a lot of good research, not just mine, but but many others in the field, uh, that it has very much to do with it. PTSD symptoms, for those who don't know, involve things like uh, hyperarousal and flash or flashbacks and nightmares. Um, it can in involve uh, avoidance avoiding talking about it, avoiding any triggers of, of uh, anything that might remind you of the trauma that do people with PTSD by and large, you do not want to talk about it or deal with it or face it. So if therapists are colluding with patients in avoiding their traumas, that's not helpful in the long run. And we, there, there's a lot of evidence now to, to really show that. It also, uh, PTSD can also uh, involve major alterations in mood and your thinking uh, and aggravate the, the low self-esteem and self-disgust and self-hate and self-deprecation and body dissatisfaction that uh, is very much a part of, of eating disorders of all types. I hope our listeners have some good takeaways from this conversation. So thank you so much for your time and being here. Oh, it's been my pleasure and my honor. Thanks for asking me. Nina's mission is to support individuals and families affected by eating disorders and serve as a catalyst for prevention, cures, and access to quality care. 
Nita offers programs and services designed to help you find the help and support you need. Whether you have been personally affected by an eating disorder or care about someone who has, recovery is possible and we're here to support you.